and uh, now uh, we want to also demonstrate this feature. So we have in the Cube firmware package for N6, uh, we have uh, several examples. So there is examples showing the JPEG encoding. Then we have uh, two examples for the for uh, storing the data from camera to the SD card, either with the uh, Tradex where we use a file system or without Tradex where we just store the raw binary data. Then we have an example with using the USB video class. And last, we have the video encoder uh, where we use uh, RTSP server and we send the image through the Ethernet to, to the PC. And this we will demonstrate uh, now. So in this example, we are using uh, HD resolution and basically from camera, uh, we go to the CSI interface, to the pixel pipeline, then to the video encoder, and then we are running the Netix Duo stack and sending the data over the Ethernet. And on the PC side, we will use the FFmpeg uh, to to play back the data. And uh, for the hardware setup, uh, we will use a router in in the network, let's say, because uh, on the discovery kit, we we are expecting the IP address to be assigned by the DHCP server. We as well have the board connected through the USB-C cable to see what is the IP address. Let's now demonstrate the video encoder using the RTSP server demo. This demo is available in the official STM32 Cube N6 firmware package and we can compile it using STM32 Cube IDE. The firmware consists of two parts, the FSBL and the application itself. For both parts, we need to generate the binary header using STM32 signing tool. For FSBL, this is required by Bootrom, and for the application, this is needed by FSBL since we will load the application into internal RAM and execute from there. For this, we need to know the size of the binary image and other metadata stored inside the binary header. For the application, we generate the header in the same way as for FSBL and as it was already described in detail in this workshop. Let's now program the firmware using STM32 Cube Programmer. We need to make sure that our board is switched to the development boot and that we have the proper external memory loader selected in the Cube Programmer for the DK board. Then I can switch to the Erasing and Programming menu. I connect to the board. I select the FSBL binary, so I navigate to the FSBL subfolder and I need to select the underscore trusted binary. And I program it to the address of uh, 70 million in hexadecimal. And I will continue with programming the main application. So again, I navigate to select the proper binary. Again, the underscore trusted bin. And I select a different address, which is now on offset of 1000, 100,000 in hexadecimal. And I start programming as well. Once we have it programmed, I can disconnect the cube programmer. I open the terminal from the virtual com port that is uh, part of the stealing on the board. And I switch back to the flash boot. So I unconnect and connect the device again. And I see the messages from the firmware. And I see the IP address as well that was obtained from the router. So we will use this IP address later to connect to this device. Once we have the firmware running on the DK board, we will connect to it from PC using FFmpeg program. I'm using the Essentials build, which is limited version of FFmpeg, but sufficient for our demo. In my setup, I have both PC and DK board connected through Ethernet cable to the router. The firmware expects the IP address to be provided by DHCP server. To run the command, I open the terminal, I type ffplay, 
and I specify the interface I want to connect to. I specify the protocol I'm using and the IP address. And now I see the picture from the camera. So I can show, for example, view from the window or uh, I can demonstrate here in the reflection from the wafer that I'm actually running on the DK board with N6 and the camera. So, and you can also notice that the preview takes the whole screen since the height of the camera preview and the desktop resolution is both 720 pixels. So that's all for this demonstration. Conclusion, so the hardware encoder allows uh, a uh, significant compression of the video data and this allows us sending the video remotely or storing it uh, locally. We support uh, different resolution and frame rates. So at uh, 720, we can support 30 frames per second. In Full HD, we support 15 frames per second. And we provide a middleware library and several examples. And we have the hardware synchronization from the camera to reduce the latency and offload the CPU. So that's all for this part.